When it comes to racing games, I prefer the more arcadey ones. I grew up with Burnout and absolutely love the fantasy action vibe of it, along with the great sense of speed. Related to this was the underrated Split Second, which combined some of the Burnout feel with some unique elements. On the PS4, the overlooked Onrush was a solid title made by the same people behind the very fun MotorStorm series. And at times, I do like to try out more realistic racers. And while I'm not good at them at all, they provide some good laughs with my awesome awful skill and I appreciate the options that they offer like in the WRC series. My first experience with the Grid series was the 2019 version, which I did enjoy but I had some issues with it. And from what longtime fans of the series told me, the older games are easily the best versions of Grid. That all being said, I was interested in Grid Legends. It looked like a solid racer and it really didn't get much attention when it was released in quarter one of 2022. After spending some time with it, I saw that it is a fun title that was unfortunate to be released around bigger games. Grid Legends is a fun arcade racer with some realistic elements that can either be turned on or off if the player so chooses. There's plenty of modes and even a fun story-driven campaign which is an unexpected surprise. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you my review for Grid Legends. Grid is a really solid arcade racer with a good amount of content and fun minute-to-minute -minute gameplay. The campaign portion of the experience was really unexpected because the developers went all out and created a story-focused campaign. This lasts for about five hours and it's really enjoyable. On top of this, you have the career mode, which is a set of races that you can complete in either solo or even co-op play. There's a bunch of cars and upgrades to earn as well, which means you will always be working towards something. Add on to this the online mode for competitive or co-op co-op options and even a race editor and you have a lot of content to keep you coming back. I really enjoyed the minute-to-minute -minute racing action. The controls were easy to pick up and get into. There is a rewind mechanic that you can use to allow you to see the action in reverse and find the best time to resume it. This is really cool to watch while in single players you can really take in the spectacle of a bad move, along with it being very useful to use. And like I said, the action is easy to understand and the game allows you to toy around with a bunch of options so you can add on or take away realism elements to create a more challenging or easier to get into experience. For example, you can change how damage works, the enemy AI, and a lot more. In addition to this, there are many assists that can be turned on and off, like alert messages. Much of this comes down to player preference, as there's more options here than I would expect. So you can really tailor how the game is to the player. On the flip side, it allows players who are less skilled to slowly ease themselves into adding more realistic elements to the game. And as someone who enjoys racing games but is bad at them, I really appreciated this. And that's Raven West, Nathan McCain, and Laura Carvalho leading the charge here at Strada Alpina. Danaka spots a gap. It's all or nothing. Contact! In a situation like this, all you can do is hope that the drivers are all okay. It's on? Yeah? Okay. My name is Marcus Ado, and I'm the team principal for Seneca Racing. Hey, gorgeous. No, 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 we uh, have that um, dinner with the board. The campaign was a pleasant surprise from its execution and style. From a gameplay perspective, you will participate in a variety of races, from normal races, elimination, time trials, to races that allow you to boost. There's a good variety here, and it sort of acts like a tutorial to give the player a taste of everything. What really makes the campaign compelling is the story itself. The narrative is presented like a documentary as you follow a few teams through several events. 
Seneca are the underdogs and you'll be rooting for them the whole time. You get some background on each of the main players through the interviews. Live action is rarely used nowadays, but I thought it was used well here, and it blended in well with all the other elements. Since the cutscenes will show you both the heroes and the villains, we get to see both sides of the story as all of the tension is interwoven with the documentary presentation. The handheld camera moments give off the impression that we are observing a slice of life for these racers. The delivery of the actors is just cheesy enough, along with conveying the drama when some of the more serious parts are happening. You won't get emotionally invested in the characters and their struggle, but it makes for some great entertainment. The developers obviously put a lot of work into this, and I greatly appreciated what they were able to achieve with it. Now after the campaign, there's plenty of other modes to dive into. For single player content, you have the career mode. This is where you will participate in several races, earn new cars, and upgrade them. Races consist of normal races, time trials, eliminations, boost races, along with a few others. Boost races do a good job of putting you into some of the fastest cars in the game, and it's really here where the game really gets to convey that fantasy sense of speed in one of these races. There's a good amount of tracks, and the game makes good use of variations to make playing them still engaging, as you play the same track at different times of day or in different weather like rain or snow. This is where you can see a lot of the appreciated detail, especially when in a cockpit view. Something else that's worth noting is how the career mode can be played in both single player and as a multiplayer mode. You can set it to allow players to join your race, and now you're contending with both a human and the AI. This is a fun way to spice up the races as well and throw in a new challenge. You can also use this as a means for co-op with one other person. Now you can opt to just keep these online options off so that you can play it like a traditional single player mode. Just make sure to check the settings because if the game is not set to offline you cannot pause during a race. Now for online, you can search for quick matches to get to the action fast. Or the game has a nice list of online matches you can review and select the best one for yourself. With this game having crossplay, there's a good amount of people still playing it. An awesome surprise was the race creator. You can toy around with a lot of modifiers, like whether you have the boosts, ramps, the type of race, class of cars that are allowed, what maps to include, level conditions like day or night, along with other choices. You aren't really making a track from scratch, but rather you are able to modify tracks and locations to fit how you want to race on them. But this type of stuff I don't usually expect to see, but it allows for a bunch of personalization to the experience, and it keeps you coming back to it. Now as I mentioned before, you will unlock upgrades for your cars and new cars as well. On top of this, you can unlock upgrades for your different teams to provide you with buffs, along with sponsors to earn more from each race you do. Grid Legends doesn't necessarily do anything new for the genre, but what I appreciated was the amount of content and how much fun it was. Before we move to the conclusion, I want to mention the soundtrack. This was another surprise as well as it fuels the racing action nicely. Here are a few tracks from the game. Grid Legends was an unexpectedly solid racer. I feel like EA didn't put enough money into the marketing of this game, as it was not advertised enough. On the other hand, maybe it was, but some of the bigger titles just overshadowed it no matter what. But as a fan of arcade racers, this was right up my alley. The controls and gameplay and general racing is all really good. My main issue with it is the sense of impact in the sound department. When you hit another car, the game lacks that satisfying bang that you would expect to hear. The visual damage is pretty cool, but the sound 
needed more bang to the impact. The campaign was really enjoyable from the cheesy delivery to the documentary style of the narrative. Career mode provides plenty of hours of solo content, and I like how you could play it in co-op or even have other players enter into those races. If you're looking for a fun racer, this is a good pick. It's often half off and I recommend it. If you're interested in being notified of new videos, please hit the subscribe button and bell. And if you'd like to support the channel and get early access to content, please check out my Patreon. All the links will be at the end of this video and within the description. And thank you very much for watching.